Craig Venter is a pioneer in human genome research. His new company plans to analyze DNA and use stem cell therapy to help you live a longer and healthier life. He's with us now for an interview you'll see first on CBS This Morning. Craig Venter, good morning. Good morning. Great to be with you. I'm glad you're here. People got very excited about this, living a longer, and the buzzword here is healthier life. What exactly are you doing? So it was 13 years ago when my team sequenced the first human genome, and that cost about $100 million and took nine months. Now the technology has progressed where we can do 100,000 genomes for that same cost and that same time frame. So it's past that threshold where we can start to use genomics for the general practice of medicine. And that's what we're starting. We're trying to layer the genomic data on top of measuring proteomic data, microbiome data, the chemical data in bloodstream with the clinical records to try and get medicine totally on an information-driven basis. Uh, we can measure all this stuff. It always gets measured independently. We're trying to combine it in one of the world's largest databases. If you have all that data, what can you do with it? What does it mean? So right now, for example, with cancer, there's only about two dozen genes that are sort of called actionable. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have lung cancer and you have a change in the ALK gene, one letter change, 4% uh, of people mm -hmm. have that with lung cancer. Pfizer has a drug that is 60% effective in knocking back that cancer. Mm -hmm. So if you have lung cancer, that's the most important thing you can know is your genome. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're yeah. trying to change that instead of a couple dozen to have hundreds if not thousands of these kind of actionable data by looking across the entire genome uh, in a database with a half a million to a million people over the next five years or so. Answer this though, genes are so important, but aren't they just part of the picture? What about the environment, lifestyle, epigenetics? Don't those play a big role as well? Absolutely, and so this database, this comparison we're doing, uh, will be our first chance in history to truly find out the answers to those questions. You what's genetic, what's nature, what's nurture? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we don't really know, because as you know, there are people who are 100 years old and been smoking for 40 years. Yeah, exactly. So another quick question though, you've been doing this with $70 million in research. China, there's something called the Beijing Genetics Institute. We did a story about it mm -hmm. last week here. They're getting $1.5 billion from the Chinese. They're gonna map millions and they're so far ahead of us, why? Well, partly because of the money they got from the government, yeah. and, and I know the guys there, and that they're doing good work. The center that we're just opening in San Diego with the new Illumina Instruments, also mm -hmm. based in San Diego, uh, is much larger than the Chinese program. So our center in San Diego will be the largest one in the world doing uh, human genome sequencing. And who, how are you getting the people to participate? Can, can we call you on the phone and say, hey, Craig, put me in? And what are you taking? <laughs> You're taking my blood or are you taking saliva? So we're starting slowly, and we announced a major relationship with the cancer center in UC San Diego, the Moore's Cancer Center. We're trying to get it so this data is actually used. The goal is to have every patient that comes into the cancer center, we will do their genome and we'll do the genome on their tumor. This is the starting point. We want to actually do the genome on every patient that goes into the hospital anywhere. It will be the starting point for medicine. But we're also doing stem cell therapy. Uh, we're trying to come up with new treatments based on all this okay. genetic information right. as well. Great. Very Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.